welcome. First of all, welcome. This is Unsolicited Perspectives. I'm Bruce Anthony, your host here to lead the conversation in important events and topics that are shaping today's society. Join the conversation by following us wherever you get your audio podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get our video podcast. Rate, review, like, comment, share. Share with your friends, share with your family, hell, even share with your enemies. On today's episode is the Sibling Happy Hour. I'm here with my sis, Jay Andrea. We're going to be talking about the Super time, Super Bowl Halftime Show, but it was a Super Time. Monique, <laughs> Black Facts, and since we're talking about Black people, let's talk about Black people that claimed that they were Black but weren't Black but recently got fired. <laughs> All of that up next, <laughs> but that's enough of the intro. Let's get to the show. <laughs> What up, sis? What up, brother? I can't call it. Look, I was not going to do another take on that intro. No, it, was a, a, it was a super time. It a was period. a super time. It was a super period. time Super Bowl. Yeah. First thing I want to do is give my thoughts and prayers out to all those people that are in Kansas City, those that lost their lives, those that are family members of those that lost their lives, those that were injured, everybody that was traumatized from the events. Guns, yo. Like when we gonna when we gonna do something about this? We're guns? gonna do I something know, about it. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, but it wasn't an assault rifle. It's guns, and Missouri has some of the most lax gun laws that there are. So I mean, my I'm not gonna get on that. My heart and prayers goes out to all those people. That's the most important thing to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, weird segue. Okay. But since we're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And their celebration parade because they won the Super Bowl. Let's talk about the Super Bowl more specifically. Let's talk about the halftime of the That's Super Bowl. The only thing I watched. <laughs> I know because I texted you. I said, Are you watching this? Oh, I forgot. I was like, Damn it, Jay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Super Bowl I, I used to be the first Sunday in February, and now we're not doing that anymore. I mean, it wasn't that the first Sunday in February? No. You sure it was wasn't? It? I think it was the first Sunday in February, Jay. No, February 4th is the first Sunday in February. Okay, it was not the first February, uh, the first uh, Sunday in February. Right. No, they, they added, they didn't add an extra week, but they did. It's now a football week, football, football season is now 17 weeks to 16, but all they did was take away a preseason game and make it a real game, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's been like that for a while. I'm waiting for Super Bowl Saturday. That's what I'm really waiting for. I don't know yeah. why they don't move it to Saturday. Yeah. Uh, w- that's just WWE, smart. WWE pay-per-views have, were moved from Sunday to Saturday. Now the or, only Sunday pay-per-view is the second night of WrestleMania. Or, hey, I don't know. How the game start at 1? Everybody's out of church. <laughs> but, like, well, just everybody's let, out of let's church not have it the in the East middle Coast. of the night. Well, everybody, you got to remember, there's a whole, we're on the East Coast. There's a yeah. whole other coast that's three hours behind. They already yeah. got to get up at and 10 they, o'clock on Sundays to watch the games. And they can get up, and they get up, <laughs> <laughs> or have it, you know, uh, three o'clock, four o'clock, something like that. Why is it They want to get them so prime time late. hours. They want to get them prime time hours. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't, right. I didn't watch the game. So what did you think of Usher Raymond? I loved it. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. And it's so funny uh, because the people who didn't like it are all of a certain demographic. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. I I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I paid attention to the people that said they didn't like it. And Mm -hmm. I was talking to one person and they were of that demographic and and they were, I was like, you didn't like the show. It was just like, I don't know. He'd never finished any of his songs. I was like, it's a medley. What's it's like what? he has 15 minutes. It's and he has two decades worth of hits. Yes. All of them do medleys. None of them finish their all their their entire and songs. Everybody has done a medley from the did everybody does a medley. And, but that but that right there showed me that that person, like, okay, your opinion doesn't really matter because it's Mm-mm. clear. That you're not really watching the Super Bowl halftime shows. If that no. is your gripe is he doesn't finish the songs, then you just don't understand how this thing goes. Right. But yeah, 
I saw it was a certain demographic that, and, and let's be clear, not everybody that was a part of that demographic didn't like the show. There were right. a lot of people from that demographic that really liked the show. Yes. Um, but the, the people that said they didn't, yes, they were of a particular demographic. That is that absolutely for sure. That probably does not listen to a lot of R&B. You know, like there's a certain, there's like maybe two or three songs that, that Usher did that had real crossover, you know, like, yeah, they would play in the, in, in the, uh, white clubs and, uh, oh, well, yeah, OMG, they would play. Oh yeah. my God. Oh. Yeah. So they know those two, <laughs> but it's like the, like. They're not going to know. No. And I was upset. I was upset. Yeah. You know, my favorite, well, I have a few favorite Usher songs and he didn't do yeah. any of them. Um, yeah. he didn't do any of my favorites. My true favorite okay. is Lovers and Friends. And I was yeah. like, you got everybody there to do it. Everybody was there. But no, but but here's the thing. It's gotta he's gotta perform his crossover hits. And Lovers yeah. and Friends was not that. So he can't, even though that's one of my favorites too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean everybody even, loves, I mean, even even Lil John's part, which is just hilarious because it's him trying to be tender, but he's got a little <laughs> the little John voice. Yeah. Like, no. I no. would never ever cross the line. No, no, no hold on. His whole his whole verse is not tender. But the, but the thing I love about that <laughs> verse is uh, somebody did a, a a video of this on TikTok. It really was a lesson in consent. If you listen to the lyrics, <laughs> oh, I would never ever cross yeah. the line. You know, Baby, let me hear you say it one more one time. One more time. One more time. Yeah, like he. <laughs> Are you sure you want to go this route? <laughs> let me know before, before I pull I, it out. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was. <laughs> it was. It was truly a lesson in consent. And I was I like, it's an amazing it like verse. It's an amazing verse. So I just love that song. I just yeah. it's but the other song that I love from Usher is off the Confessions album. Mm-hmm. And it's with him and Jada Kiss. Um God, what was the name of that song? Uh, you would think since it's my favorite song, that right. I would actually know the name of the song, but I always type in confessions and okay. it pops up. But it's not confessions. It's a throwback. Yes, that's okay. exactly what it is. It's throwback. Yeah. Uh, that's, but again, that's, that's a deep cut. Like, that's not. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. He, no, he's he, not. He I wasn't expecting that. that. Bowl, but when yeah. I saw Little John and Ludacris out there, yeah, I was like, okay, y'all going to drop Lovers and Friends? Yeah, Nobody at least didn't. give us the beat. At least give us the beat and, like, you know, a little bit of it. You a know? Little, little sway, because he showed enough was swaying uh, with Alicia. Listen, <laughs> and I don't feel no way about it. First of all, now, now, did he get off the stage and go get married? Yeah. So <laughs> wait a minute, what? Yeah, he got married like right after. To who? To his longtime girlfriend and the mother of his two youngest children. The older lady. I don't know how. I don't know how. I think because I remember he age. was with an older lady for the longest time. I think they're the same age. Uh, he went off and got married. Well, I, <laughs> well, I, I look. Like, he made like, sure. Like, literally, he just got off the stage. <laughs> like, he, he changed outfits and they got married. It was crazy. All sweaty because he was sweating. All to be damn. Well, you know, listen, listen, Usher, Usher's getting older. He still got the moves. He still got them. Like, that's. I, he does that's, still have the move. But, but I, it's, I, I he saw gonna be guys, a little slower. I saw guys. <laughs> going up in arms about the whole Alicia thing. And let's be clear. If you watch it, even she is like, come on, bro. Like you, you hugging up on me a little too much. Right. He, he, he was doing a little too much, but, but fellas, he does that. Yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, fellas, Swiss beast. I don't think it's tripping off of that at all. No, no. Besides their relationship started with an affair in the first place. Right. 
<laughs> that part. I but, mean, I know Trey Songs is Mr. Steal Your Girl, but let's be honest, it's, it was Usher first. Uh, did Usher really ever steal any girls? Look, Kiki Kiki Palmer and her baby daddy broke up after that Usher concert. <laughs> <laughs> what was it because of that though? I thought it was because some other stuff. It was it was definitely because of some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. it was because of some abusive. other stuff. Yeah. Um, but that was I think the embarrassment, the public embarrassment, then she had to confront the private uh things that were happening too. So yeah. I think that was a catalyst for it. He will Speaking- grind up on you. Yeah, no, yeah, he and I would have too. As fine as Alicia was, I would have, I would have been like, hey, look, I know you've been with Swiss for a little while. But... And I'm literally about to get married. <laughs> but <laughs> now, are you sure you want to go this route? <laughs> now, there was some disappointment to the halftime show. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch it at first, but I was. Not halfway in the bag. I was all the way in the bag by this point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't see it. So I had to go back and see clips of it. Okay. Uh, the roller skate section. Uh, I missed of the this sh- too. I did not see it as it was happening. <laughs> I didn't see it. Uh, which is, you know, shout out to uh, the director who, right. I guess, cut away. I don't know what happened, but I, they For were- those I, of you- that don't know one of the people that was one of the dancers that were in the roller skates with Usher fell off the stage and she had a very very interesting story about why she fell off the stage how she fell off the stage and what it all entails so I'm trying to pull up the young lady's name but it's uh, Jamie Jackson or it was posted by Jamie Jackson. I don't know where her. Oh, Louisa Melcher. Louisa, Louisa Melcher. Melcher. Okay, Louisa yes. Melcher is an is an actress, and she's the one who fell off the stage. And she posted a little video explaining, you know, what happened. She had a black well, eye, busted face. Uh, well, it, that was a it was a joke video, but yes. What was a joke? How was? What do you mean? It's a joke video? Did I get fooled oh. by the internet? Yes, she's a a content creator. She makes up. So she wasn't actually. Oh, artist. she wasn't actually she, no. So she was I pretending. Wish, I wish that you had told me this. Uh, oh, before. I just I just uh, pulled it up from the rundown, and I saw uh, Twitter has a little note underneath the video. I just I was uh, just reading it. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not gonna cut this. Yeah, I'm not gonna cut this out. This is no, keep uh, it in because you know that this is this is but, it's live you know for us. <laughs> but you know what though this this brings me to a very very important point and mm-hmm. I, you know I criticize people all the time for getting stuff from the internet and not completely vetting it and here I am got something from the internet and was absolutely fooled because yeah. I absolutely believed that this was one now there was absolutely somebody who fell off the stage yes that did yes. happen that happened but the person yes. posting the video did not fall off the stage but the content creation was still funny because she yes. portrayed the person uh, that fell off the stage talking about lying on the resume yeah, and saying that actors and actresses oftentimes lie on the resume saying they could do certain things that they can't do and, and when they get the job that they'll just figure it out. Yeah. And I'm sure that absolutely happens. And in, and in the joke of the video, which was not real that I just found out, she was saying <laughs> she was saying she was trying to teach herself how to roller skate two hours before the performance, and that's the reason why she fell off the stage. Now, come to find out that it wasn't real, but the well, content was still funny. I, I figured it wasn't real. I just saw that letter. I mean, the I, little you know, I really notice wish, of it. And Jay, I actually sent this to you earlier this week. Yeah, and, and 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 you could have been like, "Hey, Bruce, you know this. This is a content creator. This, oh, this wasn't to, real." To be honest, I thought I thought we were in on. The, I thought we were both in on the joke. No, I wasn't. But the, I mean, oh. I am forty three, so I guess oh. you know. I well, mean, I'm I getting mean, older. these these performances are weeks and weeks of rehearsals. Like you can't teach yourself to skate two hours before and think you're going to perform at the Super Bowl. She's whoever was <laughs> still rehearsing all that time still fell off the stage. So, yeah. <laughs> so. And that's probably, and that's, you know, you're practicing it for weeks and weeks. You're doing, you did so many like rehearsals the day of, 
You right. had it down. It was flawless. <laughs> and then come to game time and you fall off the stage. I, I, I would never get over it. I would bring it up all the time. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> if, if it was you that fell off the stage, yes. you would bring it up all the time? Yes. Why? Because I could never get over it. People are like, John, how's your day going? Oh, it's pretty good. So I just remember about that time I fell off that stage. Of Super Bowl. <laughs> like it's it's something I bring up constantly in therapy. I'm journaling would bring, about it. Would I would never it get over it. Would you bring it up so that other people would bring it up? Like you jump on the joke, jump on the joke before other people get that joke off. No, because it it's literally just something I always, always, always think about. I <laughs> fell off that. St- I rehearsed. For so long. I am a professional mm-hmm. skater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, first of all, that's how I got the job. Well, I'd be, mm-hmm. a, ca- I'd be a cascade every week. Like, <laughs> <I've> been, <laughs> I, everybody knows I skate. Okay? No, no, that's a deep cut. Now, look, all right, <laughs> if, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all don't get that, that was the, the, the roller skating rank in the movie ATL. No, I mean, Cascade is a real roller skating rank down here. Yeah. And yeah. it was, I, I'm making the connection because oh, Super Bowl, oh. Usher, ATL, Cascade, ATL. Come on, follow yeah. me, Jay. Follow me. I, well, I'm, I just, I'm making Usher's, connections here. Usher's from Atlanta. So right. he, I'm sure has been there. He is a skater. He's an avid skater. And uh, well, I'm yeah, sure you can tell. Cascade. Yeah, he's yeah, an avid. Can. He posts a lot, you know, his skating videos and stuff. So he's an avid skater. And it's like a whole culture, like mm-hmm. black skate. It's, uh, it's a whole culture. It's a whole thing. And so I am a part of that world. Like, people know me. People know me as... You're not talking about you particularly. You're talking about that person that fell off the stage. Yes. Denisha Spinning Wheels Johnson. Like, people know me. (laughs) (laughs) And so (laughs) they're finding out, oh, you know, Spinning Wheels is going to do the Super Bowl. (laughs) Oh, word. And that's a great choice because old girl can skate. (laughs) And then I fall off the stage. I can't go to Cascade again. Like, I can't show my face at the rink again. Y'all see what happened to Denisha? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, podcast listeners. It's Bruce Anthony here. And welcome to another episode of Unsolicited Perspectives. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind lately. The importance of staying hydrated and taking care of ourselves. Whether it's prioritizing our health and wellness, or gearing up for festival seasons, or just gearing up for whatever season or time of year, there's one brand that's been my go-to for all things hydration, Liquid IV. Speaking of health and wellness, let's dive into how Liquid IV can fuel your well-being. Imagine starting your day off right, feeling refreshed and energized. Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier is the missing piece in your daily routine. With just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. It's perfect for those early mornings, pre-workout boosts, moments when you're just feeling run down, or even after a late night or long flights. I absolutely love how convenient Liquid IV is. The packaging makes it easy to bring with me wherever I go. And let me tell you, it's become vital daily part of my routine. The flavors, (laughs) let me tell you something, they're incredible. From refreshing sea berry and strawberry lemonade to classics like lemon lime and watermelon, there's a flavor for every preference. It's like a burst of hydration with a hint of deliciousness. Picture this. One stick of liquid IV mixed in 16 ounces of water, hydrating you two times faster and more efficient than water alone. And with 12 mouth water and flavors, you'll never get bored with your hydration routine. Plus, liquid IV is packed with five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and of course, vitamin C. It's also made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. This is hydration at its finest, but it doesn't stop there. Liquid IV believes that access to clean and abundant water is the foundation of a healthier world. That's why they partner with leading organizations finding innovative solutions to help communities protect both their water and their futures. It's incredible to know that Liquid IV has already donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. They truly walk the talk. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code unsolicited at checkout. 
That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code unsolicited at liquidiv.com. Remember folks, taking care of ourselves should always be a priority. So why wait? Head over to liquidiv.com, pick your favorite flavors and experience hydration like never before. Stay refreshed, stay hydrated, and keep rocking those unsolicited perspectives. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. That's funny. All right. But we need to move from one stage to the next. Yeah. And last week we brought it up, said that we were going to finish watching it uh, before we talked about Monique the Comedian. Yes. Was on Club Shay Shay. Yeah. You said you had a lot to say about this. I mean, not a lot, but yeah, a lot. I mean, it's, <laughs> which one? Is, which one is it? A lot well, or not we'll a lot? See, we'll see once I get going. Like I do have <laughs> notes, but we'll okay. see as I get I'm a, going. I'm gonna just let you go. Go. <laughs> I think it's just like with Cat Williams. There is a black Hollywood. You want to call them the Illuminati. You want to call them a cartel or whatever. There are there are gatekeepers in Black Hollywood, mm-hmm. and I a hundred percent believe both of them that a people not getting paid what they're supposed to be getting paid. People are being lied on. People getting jokes stolen. People are getting disrespected and all of this stuff and thrown under the bus and you know. Uh, sold out, you know, and all types of stuff. I, 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 a hundred, I 100% believe the both of them Mm -hmm. that this was happening. And it's, and it's funny because I remember when Monique turned down the initial Netflix offer to do a special. Okay. And even I side-eyed her and she mentioned something about, well, she mentioned this a lot about the way we tear each other down. Mm -hmm. And I had to like check myself because I'm so conditioned to disregard black folks, to disregard women, to disregard Mm. fat people. And she's all three. Yeah. And people don't talk in Hollywood, like about the stuff, the real stuff that's going on. So you have people like her and Kat they're anomalies, right? Because mm-hmm. they're going against what's the norm. Mm-hmm. And even for us as, as the audience or as consumers, right? We know the little gossip mag stuff, but we don't know these people's real lives. And we're all right. aware of that. Like, we don't mm-hmm. know. We know what your publicist sold to whatever gossip magazine to get you publicity or you know, get you on a headline for that day. Like we don't, nobody is really doing in-depth investigative work on people's lives and stuff. We know we don't know these people. Right. And we know that there's more going on behind the scene. We know uh, that Hollywood can be an insidious place. We've, We've watched people that we have loved their work die, Mm -hmm. kill themselves, uh, (laughs) drugs, anything. Just escape just to Africa. Escape to Africa. Yeah. Go crazy. Or what seems like they go crazy. No, some of them go crazy. Shave their head and getting DUIs and going. I mean, you got you know, the people that there are people that literally end up with with severe mental health issues right. just okay. from being yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. Um. Cat, I think is very lucky, uh, well, not lucky, smart, in that he built an independent career as stand-up. Like, he funds his stand-ups. Like, he mm. funds his, but, like, that's that's his, he's collecting all the money from all these specials he does, the tours, all that stuff. Um, so he didn't suffer the financial setback that not as much not as, as much yeah yeah he's, but should he be a bigger star than he is in film and television yeah 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 because um, i mean like like he said 
and I know we were talking about Monique, but just to talk about Cat, mm-hmm. what he said is he and Kevin Hart kind of started at the same time, and Cat Williams was the star. Yeah. Kevin Hart was not the star. I have always thought Kevin Hart was funny. Not as funny as Cat Williams. Um, and but but Kevin knows how to play that game. The politicking. The yeah. politic game. And some people are just not into that politic game. No. They just and, can't do it. It's not in them to put on a smile and say, yes, sure. I can do that. I'll take that. Sure. Yeah. It's not in them to do that. Even though, you know, when people do that, it's it's not always just because there's some step and fetch it. Like it's it's also because I know I gotta take my lumps now so that I can put myself in a position like Kevin has done. Yeah. That and that's I a, can and, make the decisions. And that's I, what Monique said as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, that she took her lumps. Cause I think something that gets missed. And a lot of the layman's out there would be like, well, that's a lot of money. When she said that her and um, her co-star for her sitcom were mm-hmm. making $55,000 a piece per episode for a highly rated television show, most people would look at, oh, that's a million dollars a season. That's great. Conversely, mm-hmm. you had the Friends stars mm-hmm. in the last season, I believe, was 2000 making a million plus per episode. And I can't even remember what Jerry Seinfeld was making by the end. But Jerry was also the executive producer and Jerry's a little different. Jerry's a little different because that's a, the Parkers are a hit show. Mm -hmm. Parkers isn't an iconic show like Seinfeld is. I wouldn't say Friends is iconic either. Um, I would, the Parkers are not even as iconic as like Martin or the Fresh Prince. If we're talking about black sitcoms or a different world or the Cosby show, but it's in the next here, it's a hit show. I think it also depends on the generation because we weren't really the Moesha generation. Like we were Monique. No, like that Moesha time or like Moesha was on Monique. Because I remember Parkers is a spinoff of Moesha. Yeah, but it's a spinoff after a couple of seasons. I was watching yeah. Moesha when it first aired because me and her are the same age. So when they yeah. if she had the TV show, I was watching it. But the there Parkers, are people who like they grew up the way we grew the, up on Martin. Or is how they grew up on the Parkers. The Parkers and don't yeah. get me wrong; if you go back and watch those Parker episodes, boy, hilarious, boy, hilarious. Monique, okay. Countess Vaughn, uh, who was Professor Ogilvie? I forgot his name. I remember uh, him from the TV show Dream On. Uh, that's because that was Dream On was like a nasty sitcom on HBO, which yeah. wasn't porn, but it was kind of like porn for an eight, nine, Dorian ten year Wilson. old boy. That's uh, it, Dorian Wilson. Yep. And don't forget, uh, <laughs> they had other characters, but the lone white girl on the show was uh, on Blossom. She was six from Blossom. Yes. 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 Um, just to say that the cast has some diversity. <laughs> one person. They it's were, just sad. They that were was all you needed. That they was were all at you a community needed. college and it was one person. But you know what? Friends had one black person on for the entire run. Yep. And then they changed the character. <laughs> it was the same character, but they just picked two different black women to play the same character. Right. Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah. I, I, she was talking. She was speaking a lot of truths. And she was throwing heavy hitters. Yeah. Out there. See, when Cat was attacking people, he was attacking, you know, Steve Harvey is a heavy hitter. He is. Uh, but not as heavy as Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. Right. When you come at the queen, you best not miss. And she did not miss because she no. had receipts. And you know what? Taraji P. Henson said the same thing when they were talking, when she was talking about what she got paid and the and the surrounding atmosphere on the remake of A Color Purple. Yeah. She said the same exact thing. It's funny because Monique says, why didn't people hear you when you were saying these things a long time ago? And she said the same reason why, you know, people weren't paying attention to Cat until he was on your show. It's the messenger. Yeah. And I remember telling somebody, I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but I remember telling somebody one time, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. 
sometimes the messenger, can be perceived as something that's abrupt and forceful mm -hmm. and you can't receive what it is that they're trying to tell you, even if they're telling you the truth. Right. You can't hear it. Yeah. Whereas Taraji P. Henson is, is, is complaining. And this was, Taraji has been like everywhere. Yeah. You know, and, and she's crossed over as well. That's another thing. Yeah. Taraji has crossed over. Monique has never crossed over. Even her Oscar is from essentially a black movie. Yes. So, and that movie did not, Precious never crossed over. Not for real, for real. People, everybody saw it just because it was an Oscar and contender. But I think I, if that it, was the reason why they saw it, yeah, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't see it initially and, just to go see it. It wasn't. And when it it played at cons, and uh, and I, I believe it did well there as as well. So, oh, because it's a great movie. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, the, the young lady that played Precious was fantastic. Monique was fantastic. Uh, Mariah Carey was fantastic. Mm -hmm. it yeah, was just, shout it was out to Deborah Sidibey. Um, she was amazing in that role, and and so was Monique. Monique deserved that Oscar because yeah, she, was, she did. She played that role uh, with such gravitas, and like she gave that a, a woman who was horrible. Um, she she made her a, a sympathetic. Yeah, she made she did. you know you had some empathy for her. Um even though she was a truly horrible person. <laughs> oh, absolutely the worst person. And another thing from this Monique interview that I think is, is important is some people in the black community after Kat came out and after Monique came out have been screaming and yelling, why are we telling each, tearing each other down in public? You know what? I don't agree with that. I don't think it's us tearing each other down in public. I think that, and if it was, guess what? Every demographic tears each other down in, in public. It is not that big of a deal. But when something is wrong, it needs to come to light. Yes. Or and else we, oh, no, go ahead. Or, or else it'll never get fixed. No. Nah. And we in our community have a very terrible problem <laughs> with keeping things hidden. Mm -hmm. For some weird respectability politics. Yeah, I don't want. I don't. I, I, because yes. we would rather we would rather keep predators in our family mm -hmm. than have the outward have anything tarnish our outward appearance. Yep. Yep. And Always. so, if you think that Monique didn't get hate from her own people after said, hell, I, that's like I said, I was like, at first I was like, girl, please. And then I was like, wait, check yourself. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with an Oscar award winning, <laughs> uh, a, a prolific stand up comedian? Because to this day I can put on Queens of comedy and I die. By the way, <laughs> she was, Two queens of comedy, what Bernie was mm -hmm. to the kings of comedy. Yeah, don't get me, a, don't get it wrong. All of them were queens. Yes, but she was the queen bee. Even Samore had to say because Samore was initially the closer. Mm -hmm. She said, "You're the closer." Just I like mean, Steve, Steve was initially the closer of Kings of Comedy. No, nope. well, he didn't. But Steve didn't say you the closer. No, they no, to, they had to just no. say. They, they had to just say it. They told him. Um, yeah, you got more on this, or did you get it all out the system? Well, I think she's right too. She said this, and she was like, "If I was white, I'd be Melissa McCarthy." I love that part because she's absolutely she's absolutely right. right. And that she when didn't she get said the that, same... I was like, "Boom! There you go." I yeah, know it all makes she... sense to me now. She didn't get the same opportunity. She didn't get the same to be on the same trajectory. Mm -hmm. um, even though it is amazing, she was only in LA for three months before she got her own show. That's amazing. Right. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. <laughs> That's talented. And but she's also really, really funny. She's hilarious. Like, just, and can't help it. One of those people yeah. that's just funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do believe that she has gotten the. Uh, unfortunate title of being difficult to work with. I think she earned it, um, but not in the way that 
people are giving it to her. She earned it in that she is demanding what she knows that she's worth. Mm. And that makes you difficult to work with because what they want is somebody to do it for free. What they want or to do it for less. So, they want somebody to be complacent. Yeah. You should be thankful for the opportunity. No. Not I'm just not thankful for the opportunity. Not just complacent. Complicit. They want right. you to be to buy into it. To buy mm-hmm. into this bullshit. Sorry. This bull stuff <laughs> <laughs> of this is how much you're worth. Mm-hmm. This is how yeah. much it costs to get you. Yep. And you'll take it. And you'll do promotion and press for us and tap dance. And she said, no. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, What do you think about her son's video? um, So for those that don't know, in that in that interview, she doesn't really talk. She says, my baby's my baby's my baby. She doesn't really talk about the fact that her and her oldest son are really not on the best of terms. He came out with a little video talking about some of the reasons why he and his mother are not on the best of terms. And I will tell you, as being the oldest, Mm -hmm. not just the oldest, if if you're in a group of siblings, each sibling has a different parent, even though they're all the same parents. Right. They're the same people. But they get different versions of them. So yeah. each relationship, when you when you have siblings and you say, mom and dad were great to me, that was to you. Right. That doesn't mean that I got that same version of them. You're right. And I will say, being the firstborn is often one of the most difficult because you're literally the test dummy. Yeah. The most mistakes are typically done with the firstborn because it's the first go around. Yeah. You, you don't. You don't, by the second one, you try to apply the same scenario. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work because that once again is a different person. Mm -hmm. So each child is different, but at least it's it's just like, you know, trying to roller skate, right? Yeah. The first time you try to roller skate, you're going to bust your ass. But as you continue on to practice, you'll get better. You'll try to do tricks and sometimes they won't work out. So you'll try different things passed down by each child. Sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it won't won't work. But initially, that first child is the test dummy. Yeah. So they don't have a good relationship. Plus, she was young. And that's typically what it is. The first child is typically that parent is young. Mm -hmm. As they get older, become more mature, and they have more and more children. Once again, the later children get different versions of that parent. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he was just like, yo, you haven't really tried to resolve any of these things. And you always say to me... Hey, when you're ready to talk, come to me. Why is it that I'm the child and I have to come to you to fix yeah. an issue between us? You're the parent. So I, I, I felt a lot of what he was saying, but she also had receipts because she went on some social media site and said, look at these text messages. that I, I don't reach out to you. Here are the text messages of, of me reaching out to you. But he might just be done with it. Yeah. Right. Because he said that in that in that video is like, I'm done with it. I'm cool. We tried. It didn't work out. And he's he was also right. Just because it's your blood don't mean that you got to accept whatever it is. Right. right? We've all got family members that we've turned our back on because it's just like, you know what? I can't deal with it no more. You're not good for my mental, emotional health. I don't care if we're blood. That whole thing with blood should stick together forever. No. Not if it's damaging your mental and emotional well-being. And he's just like, we got so much. He's got his own kids. Yeah. She's a grandmother. And so he's like, no, I, I'm I'm done trying to focus on a relationship between us. We've mm-hmm. been there, done that. Never works out. You play the victim. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not going to have that. And parents will play the victim. Parents will say, well, I didn't have this and I didn't have that. That's not yeah. the point. Your life is not my life. Just because I might have it. Easier for you, easier than you did economically doesn't mean that my life was easier. There are different yeah. problems that come from different walks of life. So and and uh, and beyond that, you know, not even that we're different people. When you get that response of, "Well, I didn't have that," okay, well, how did that make you feel? And do you want me to feel the way you did? Mm. You know, that's the simple question. 
Yeah. Or, you know, but, you know, a parent's memory and a child's memory are going to be different. Always. Right. Like, uh, that's just the truth. Yeah. But that was the one thing about her interview that I was like, womp, womp. Uh, I felt like her attitude toward it was trash. Mm-hmm. You are the parent. Yeah. He is your child. Yeah. If you owe him an apology because you were not there to mother him the way you should have been, you don't get to just say, I told him I'm sorry. I'm not going to apologize forever. He can come to me. No. That's your child. Yeah. You brought him here. And how did you apologize? Did you apologize by saying, I'm sorry I wasn't there. I was going through some things. That's not the proper way to apologize. There's a book that teaches you how to apologize. There's like five things, Mm -hmm. right? There's acknowledging you're wrong. I'm going, I'm paraphrasing y'all. I'm paraphrasing. It's acknowledging you, acknowledging that you're wrong, saying that you're sorry, asking for forgiveness, saying that you'll correct your behavior and or won't repeat it again. And there's something else. There's something along those lines. So a lot of times people will just be like, sorry, Sorry for what? What are you sorry for? Right. I'm sorry that you felt that way. That's not that's not an apology. Well, then you're not said, sorry. She said she didn't give a punk apology. She did, <laughs> you know, she acknowledged the things that but but it doesn't stop there. Like, because that was years of neglect, mm-hmm. it's gonna take years to make that up. It's right. the same thing when you when you talk about people losing weight and people are like, it's been 20 minutes and I have not lost 10 pounds yet. It didn't <laughs> take you 20 minutes to put it on. It's not going to take you 20 minutes to take it off. You don't, when you owe somebody an apology and you say you really, you want to maintain the relationship, you ha- if you want to maintain a relationship, you're looking at me like that because you think I don't give good apologies. But the thing of it is... <laughs> ladies, and gentlemen, and ladies and gentlemen, if y'all are on the audio platform and not on the video platform, I'm just giving my sister a face. because I'm going to take a quick detour you, and throw no, her under you, the bus. You always do this, but I give good apologies. <laughs> y'all are never paying attention because you always have it in your mind. And you'll I'll say okay, something maybe and I'll be nowadays. wrong. And I'll be wrong and I'll be like, oh, that's my bad. I'm I was wrong. And and you just be like, oh, every time John apologizes, she just be like, sorry. And that's not true. Uh, Okay. When you, okay. (laughs) I I will give you that. I can't remember the last time one that you had to apologize to me. Um, Yeah. I can't remember the last time you actually had to apologize to me, but when you were younger, when you were younger and you were, I would be like, yo, Jay, you did this and that. And you'd be like, sorry. That's how yeah, you would apologize because, back in that because because children don't have a real no nah, you were no child you it, you was like in high school a, yeah a teenager doesn't have a real concept of what it means to give a good apology I always knew how to give great apologies no you didn't <laughs> you just you just say a bunch of stuff and you talk for a really really long time <laughs> but it's sincere though it's sincere as hell. Ah, so people just be like, can we get this over with? <laughs> You're doing too much. But I thought I, I that was the one thing where I was like, "You're being a hypocrite mm-hmm. because you ex- you are fine with dragging out what happened between you and Tyler Perry and Oprah, right? And you'll talk to anybody who will listen about it, and you're calling for them to be accountable and to come to you with be accountable and pay you and all that stuff. But your son has to come to you. Everybody's got to come to you. He doesn't have the right to be as upset as you are. And you mad about money. He's mad about his mother. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that was the part of the interview. I was just like, ah, oh, Monique, I, I was rocking with you for so long, but yeah. uh, this ain't going to be a, a situation but, where you keep getting on your high horse and don't have some humility about your own stuff. And that's another thing about her. She also buys into this BS uh, of black respectability politics and, oh, don't go out wearing a bonnet and don't go out doing this and that. Excuse me, ma'am. But if you're not paying for the hair that's underneath this bonnet, get get out of my face. <laughs> don't tell me how I can leave the house. Have some respect for yourself. Don't nobody say that to other people when they're just wearing yoga pants and Ugg boots. <laughs> And a messy bun. Nobody's telling nobody. Nobody's saying to them, "Uh, why don't you put on a dress or something? 
<laughs> but we gotta be res- we gotta be respectable in it's the that way that's school. respectable in your definition of respectable. Yeah, which has yeah. nothing to do with my character. It again yeah. has to do with the facade. Yeah, yeah. Save it. But <laughs> uh, the other stuff, I believe her. Yeah. I definitely believe her. Well, I've never been a fan of Tyler Perry. So y'all you know really I believe not. that. Y'all I'd be know like, that Tyler Perry that, movie was good. And you that's like, actually I'm, not I'm true. Not watching. I initially was a fan of Tyler Perry. I saw his plays several times. Oh, okay. I mean, front row. And then I started to pay more attention okay. to the story. Mm, yeah, the story is always the same. Yes. It's yeah. always the same, and that the strongest female character in any of his work is him. <laughs> she is the only independent, self-sustained. <laughs> Medea is the only self-sufficient, independent woman in all of his work. Everybody else had to be saved by some man. Yeah. Just usually Shamar Moore in a bad cornrow wig. <laughs> don't, don't bring up Shamar Moore in a bad cornrow. All right, that's enough of this. Let's get to some black inventions next. Yes. So we go from Monique and her messiness to another black fact and a black inventor. So on the last episode, I talked about the inventor of the potato chip. <laughs> yes, I saw that. <laughs> you said we wouldn't have no Doritos. No, we have no, no Cheetos. Cheetos. No nothing. <laughs> and then I talked about the fact that everybody has a ring or security camera, but the entire concept was created by Marie Brown, a black woman. Yes. You know what and else? I did know. Oh, I didn't know that. You know yeah. what else black people created? I do know, but I'm I'm gonna say I don't so that you can <laughs> Okay. Well tell if you know, audience. just tell the people. No, if you know, just tell the people. <laughs> I mean, but I know because I saw the rundown for the show. <laughs> black people created the gas mask. Mm-hmm. And and I bet you're wondering to yourself, the gas mask, what is that? I'm about to get to it. So Garrett Morgan was the pioneer of the gas mask. He was born in 1877. Uh, and let's let's talk about what the gas mask actually did. So there were safety concerns. Morgan witnessed a Triangle Shirt Waist Company fire in 1911. Which was uh, a where, huge, huge, is uh, the Triangle Shirt Waist Company, that fire, um, since so many people died, that's like a huge thing in history, that fire. Well, I didn't know about that. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, and I'm a historian. 146 garment workers tragically lost their lives due to inadequate safety measures. Uh, this kind of sparked his interest and put a driving, a battery in his back to, feel, to see how can we save lives. This was the basis of what he wanted to do. He wanted mm-hmm. to save lives. So he created the gas mash, which was designed to prevent smoke inhalation, a problem a problem that has stymied inventors for years. Smoke inhalation is responsible for about 77% of fire-related deaths, mostly from carbon monoxide poisoning. Morgan created a mask that, that proved its worth in 1916 during a national gas pocket explosion. It was 120 feet beneath Lake Erie. I believe that's in uh, Cleveland. I believe Lake Erie is in Cleveland. Mm. Uh, yes, it is in Cleveland. Okay. Uh, the expo- uh, the explosion occurred during um, work on Cleveland's newest waterworks tunnel. The blast left 11 tunnel workers dead and 11 of 18 rescuer- rescuers also died due to a lack of proper safety equipment. Desperate to save people's lives, uh, the Cleveland police turned to Morgan and his gas mask invention. Morgan and his brother Frank. We can't forget about Frank because you know siblings Please don't forget time, about Frank. Siblings oftentimes get forgotten mm-hmm. in these great inventions. Marie Brown created what was CCTV and later became security cameras that going down evolution became a ring cl- ring cam. Yeah. Albert Brown, her husband, was right there with her. Yes. So we can't not acknowledge him. We yeah. can't not acknowledge Frank. 
Right. Frank might not have had a hand in the invention, but he had a hand in saving lives. <laughs> he Frank, and his brother. Frank was there. Frank was there. So Morgan and Frank drove down to the lakefront and successfully rescued several men. Uh, all because of his invention. How does it work? The gas mask known as the Morgan Safety Hood and Smoke Protector had several unique features that set it apart from other masks of its time. It had a canvas hood. The mask was a canvas hood that covered the entire head. It had two breathing tubes that hung low, close to the ground. The design took advantage of the fact that hot air and therefore smoke and toxic gases rise. The tubes drew in cleaner air from closer to the ground. He also had wet sponges, wet sponges, not sponges, wet sponges. It was to cool the air being breathed by the user and a charcoal filter. And that was used to remove the toxins. Mm -hmm. He's won numerous awards. In 1914, he received the first grand prize at the Second International Exposition of Safety and Sanitation for the Invention of the Gas Mask. For his bravery at Lake Erie disaster in 1916, he received a Carnegie Medal and the Medal of Bravery from the city of Erie. He was made an honorary member of the International Association of Fire Engineers. Wow. Let me repeat that again. He was made an honorary, honorary member of the International Association of Fire Engineers. Why? Because he saved a lot of lives. Yeah. He saved a lot of firefighters' lives, first responders' lives. Yes. Um, also, I'm going to speed through some of these awards because he got a lot of awards, y'all. He got yeah. a lot of awards. But uh, one thing he also is got you know credit for is the creation of the stoplight. Oh, and I didn't he know that too. The and invented the traffic signal. Oh. Uh, and, and for all those fraternity people out there, he's Alpha Phi Alpha. Alpha Phi Alpha. Y'all know who y'all are. It's Alpha Man. We, one of my closest friends is an Alpha down there in your neck of the woods, Hot Atlanta. Yeah. And then we have a family member. Yes. That's also an alpha. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of friends that are alphas. Yes. So that's their claim to fame. I had to give them a little shout out. So that's a little black fact uh, for another uh, Black History Month celebration. And like I said, it's not going to just be Black History Month. I'm going to start giving these black facts all the time. We ain't going to just celebrate it in February. We're going to celebrate it all year long because we need to start getting our credit that we deserve. When people talk about you know, what have black people done for this country? Well, one, we built it. Yeah. And and two, we are responsible for some of the greatest inventions in this country. Yeah. Period. So like and at, at a time of, like all of American music. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so that was another thing. This is interesting. Here's a black fact. Beyonce released some country songs. Yes. And if you've been following her, it's not the first country song that she's had. Um, no. she is a Texan. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and, and, but don't forget, we also invented country music. Yes. We invented we, all forms of music. American in music. In this country. Yes. Is originally from black people. Or a derivative Everything. of. Well, no, it, it, even, uh, country music was, I think it was started at, started out as bluegrass. Because mm -hmm. bluegrass was originally originated by black people. Rock and roll was originated by black people, even mm -hmm. though these are genres now that are dominated by white people. Yeah. They were created by black people. And we're also 100% still in them. Like, there are still black rock bands. There's black yeah. country singers. Like Hootie ain't the only one. <laughs> he ain't the only one. He's not the only one. <laughs> so that's my black fact for the... For the but you said you I already knew about this. No, I knew about, um, there was something else. Oh, I knew about the ring camera. I knew mm. about that. I did not know about well, the gas on. mask. Hold on. She didn't come up with the ring camera. Well, yeah, I know. The technology. To, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But, yes. Uh, but essentially, she did. The, what she created is the ring camera. The, the major difference between that and the ring camera is technology has just evolved and it's yeah. connected to a Wi-Fi. Right. So there are wires running all around the place. But right. that's the ring cam wasn't this incredible original 
creation. No, no. people been had security cams. Yeah. Since I mean, hell, uh, Tony Montana and Scarface had uh, security cams in the seventies. People, yeah, I mean, having yeah. a video doorbell has been. That's, yeah. That's not yeah. new. He connected it to the Wi-Fi. But yeah. but not to take away his credit. Somebody had to connect it to the Wi-Fi. Yeah. He did that. Yeah. And everybody on Shark Tank turned him down. And now he's a member of the Shark Tank Council. Mm -hmm. So, hey, look. You never know. You don't, never know. Don't give but up on I'm your I'm just dream. saying, originally, it was created by a black woman. And yeah. not even an engineer. She was a nurse just trying to find a way to be safe when she got home. Yeah. But but that's enough. We gave Marie Brown her flowers. This is Garrett Morgan. Yeah. Garrett Morgan saved well, I he, guess he so continues did Marie to Brown. Be, he continues to because gas masks are still used by first responders. Not his particular not his particular design, right. but his design is the genesis of yes. effective gas masks. Yes. And, Without him. And you said this, um, but most deaths out of fires are not from being burned. It is from smoke inhalation. Which, by the way, if I was going to die from a fire, mm -hmm. let me pass out and peacefully go to sleep as opposed <laughs> to being burned alive. Okay, Bruce, because there's literally... A million people who would choose to burn a lot. No one would. No one wants to do. Everybody wants to go peacefully. That's the, what are you talking about? I'm just saying. I just wanted out there in the ethos. Hey, hey, all right. Just want to let everybody know. I would love to die peacefully and not violently. Yes. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, yes. <laughs> that's that's reasonable. The only time I want to die violently is if I'm saving somebody's life. Then that yeah. just makes it more heroic. Yeah. That, I don't want to die peacefully saving somebody's martyred. life. I don't yeah, mind yeah, being yeah. martyred. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be a martyr. But yeah. just make sure that y'all build me a statue once I'm martyred. Okay. Yes. And let, <laughs> I it, want it, like, known. let it look like me. Like, don't <laughs> get real artistic and people are like, like, why her lips look like that? Or, you like know. the Kobe Bryant statue. They just released the Kobe Bryant statue. Oh, and, I haven't seen wife. it. Look, they released it, and his wife was like, he picked it out. He designed it because she knew. She knew before she even pulled down the curtain that people was going to be like, that ain't Kobe Bryant. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, that I'm, ain't, thinking that more, I'm thinking more of the, the, the Dr. King statue in D.C. Oh, uh, you mean when it looked like you're holding the penis? No. What am I thinking about then? I don't know. It's another statue they did where it was like he and Coretta hugging each other or something, but the way they designed it, it looked like it was a hand holding a giant penis. <laughs> oh, I think I did hear about that. But yeah. no, I'm talking about the one that was chiseled out of the rock. The facial features I mean, don't look, quite... I, I go, I've gone there several times. Oh, like, wow. Well, I, mean, no. I mean, they they chiseled it out of rock now. It looked well, like I mean, something out of good times. That don't well, look like the king. I, look, speak... <laughs> <laughs> the king. Speaking of being black and representing, oh, okay. <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. No, <laughs> no, yes. listen. Okay, so when this came up in the rundown, <laughs> I had to, I had to channel my good sis Simone Sanders and uh -huh. be like, "It is Black History Month." Do we have to talk about Rachel Dolezal? I, I want to talk about it only Carter because it's G. funny Carter G. Woodson as hey. did not go to the mat for Negro History Week for you to <laughs> spend it talking about this white woman. Uh, no, hold on. Hold on now. I done talked about Monique. We done talked about Monique Usher. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's you know, we talked about Garrett Moore. Yeah. No. And, we, and this is a part of black history. You know it, it why? Absolutely is not. <laughs> you know why? Yes, it is. Because she was the president of NAACP. Oh, she was God. the president of a chapter of the NAACP. For y'all that don't know, Rachel Dolezal, who was once a chapter president of the NAACP, who falsely claimed that she was black. She was not black, ladies and gentlemen. She was a white At woman. all. At she all. Was, a hundred percent fully. <laughs> white woman. Her fully white woman. Her parents came out and were like, we don't know what she's talking about. But she fooled a lot of folks. Fooled a she lot did. of folks. She did. Well, she has been fired from her position with the Arizona school district because 
She got an OnlyFans account. Oh boy. This is not this is not what Carter G. Woodson fought for. This is just not what he fought for. This isn't what King died <laughs> for. This is just you go ahead and finish your story. No, that's it. That's all I to talk about. She just got fired. <laughs> The the woman who claimed that she was black, but is not black, was white, was fired from her position because mm-hmm. she was thinking that she had white privilege, but did not. No. She was fired because of OnlyFans. Yeah. And I don't even, it doesn't even say that she was posting explicit con- uh, content. Right. It does not say that. Just saying because she was working for the Arizona school district, which by the way, Arizona. The One hell? of the most conservative states. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can't do nothing in Arizona. It's going to be another toss up state for the election, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to talk about how this woman who faked her way to being the president of the NAACP now, is mind now you, shamed. It, it, was the, being... it was the Spokane chapter, you know, aimed but <laughs> six black people in Washington. That's not true. Washington got a whole city of black folks. What? Seattle. No, we ain't in there deep like that. I've been to Seattle. We are deep. We you, deep in Seattle. You've been I've to been the to one black street in <laughs> Seattle. No, <laughs> now that may have been true because I was with black folks. So exactly. That may have been true. But exactly. Sir Mixalot is from Seattle. I did not Sir know Mix-a-Lot. that. Sir Mixalot, the, the man behind Baby Got Back and my favorite song of Sir Mixalot, put him on the glass. Oh, That's another black fact. This makes it so much worse why she legally changed her name in 2016 to Mm -hmm. keke amari (laughs) diallo an igbo (laughs) name of nigerian origin meaning gift of god you (laughs) continue to talk about this woman on not on my black history month and that's a black fact. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom. That's the end of the show. Freedom. Freedom. I don't even want to do it no more. That's Freedom. it. Freedom over. So, John, what do you got to say to the people? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what Carter G. Woodson fought for. <laughs> Oh. I, will, I will not have it. I will not have it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Is that really what you want to say to these people before yes. we end the show? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna say before we end the show. I'm not gonna say it. Never mind. <laughs> as always, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time, as always, I'll holler. Whew. That was a hell of a show. Thank you for rocking with us here on Unsolicited Perspectives with Bruce Anthony. Now, before you go, don't forget to follow, subscribe, like, comment, and share our podcast wherever you're listening or watching into it. Pass it along to your friends. If you enjoy it, that means the people that you rock with will enjoy it also. So share the wealth, share the knowledge, share the noise. And for all those people that say, well, I don't have a YouTube. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can actually watch our video podcast but the real party is on our patreon page after hours uncensored and talking straight ish after hours uncensored is another show with my sister and once again the key word there is uncensored those are exclusively on our patreon page jump onto our website at unsolicitedperspective.com for all things us that's where you can get all of our audio video our blogs and even buy our merch and if you really feel ingenuous and want to help us out you can donate on our donations page donate go strictly to improving our software and hardware so we can keep giving you guys good content that you can clearly listen to and that you can clearly see so any donation would be appreciated most importantly i want to say thank you thank you thank you for listening and watching and supporting us and i'll catch you next time audi 5000 peace